It's gonna be an overnight or at least maybe two nights. I'm gonna quickly do a walk around, make sure everything's good, and then get back in the truck here before I freeze. How's it feel being a weasel today? You're a flatbed weasel now. Dusty weasel. Country boy flatbed holler, man. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday. It's already the afternoon already. I've just hooked up to the trailer with those headers that I gotta bring over to Saskatchewan. It's gonna be an overnight or at least maybe two nights. I'm pretty sure it'll just be one, but uh, gotta strap these things down, make sure they won't fall off, and then bring them on west to Saskatchewan. It's about a six to seven hour drive of no traffic. And then once I'm done strapping that down, I've got to go and track down some yard guys around here and uh, figure out how I'm going to get chains. Like I know how to get the chains, but I got to get like a box or something or something that I can put the chains in. Because I don't want the chains inside my truck here. I don't have a headache rack on the back of this truck yet where you can hang the chains and uh, keep them out of the way. So we got to figure that out. But first, let's get this thing strapped down and safe for the highway. Wouldn't want one of these things falling off into traffic. That could, that could kill someone. Oh man, whoo! Can't feel my face. Strap down the load, I'm just pulling it out of the spot right now where I strapped it down. And I'm just going across the yard to uh, where I'm gonna pick up my chains and figure out how I'm gonna get those on the trailer. So I'm not putting the chains in my truck. Oh, I can't go through here, okay. They're loading over here. We should go back this way then, okay. I strapped these things down so much, I overkilled it, I'm, I'll be honest, I went overkill. I went way overboard. That stuff is not going anywhere, I am confident. A good rule of thumb when you're strapping down a load or securing a load that I've been taught recently is when you're going down the highway and you've secured the load behind you and you wouldn't pass your family with it, why would you pass other people with it, right? So. Make double sure, is what I've been taught. Make double sure that freight is not going anywhere. It doesn't matter if you put too many straps on, too many chains on, that doesn't matter. But it does matter if you don't put enough on. So let people laugh at you, saying, oh, overkill, you don't need that much. I don't think very many people will say that to you, but if they do, laugh back at them, saying, hey, nothing's gonna fall off my trailer. All right, it looks like this is gonna be a night vlog. But hey, here we are. We're uh, at the Flying J in Winnipeg. Actually, in Headingley, Manitoba. I call it Winnipeg, whatever. I'm gonna get in line right here. I'm gonna grab us some fuel, some go-go juice, clean the headlights, clean the windshield, fill up the washer fluid, See how far we can get towards Avonlea, Saskatchewan today. We're, uh, we got to deliver in Avonlea, that's near Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. So, a little less than an hour past Regina. It's a little, uh, a little different pulling a flatbed, especially at night. You know, I look in my mirrors, I can't see the load back there. I'm stopping quite often to check the straps, even though I've only driven like 45 minutes. I've already stopped <laughs> on the way here once, and I'm stopping here to check them again. I'll probably stop almost every hour just because uh, I haven't done it in a while. So I think it's better to be too safe than too sorry. So I, I trust the strapping job that I did. It's nighttime now, so it's hard to show you. But uh, I put more straps, way more straps than what the average driver does on the same load. I was talking to a few drivers in the yard there and uh, they all said they put four over the headers and I put six. And then plus I strapped everything down with an extra strap or two. So I'm confident in my in my job I did back there. I, I know that nothing's going anywhere, but at the same time, like I said before, it's better to be too safe than too sorry. Always better to triple check than just say, ah, oh, it's good, and then possibly miss something, and then have something fall off into traffic, and have someone get seriously hurt, or have something get seriously damaged. That's where we're at right now. It's a little bit of a different feel trucking like this. I like it. Just 
just arriving here in Brandon, Manitoba, and west uh, in the western part of the province. Time to check on our straps. Been driving about two and a half, two and three quarter hours. And we'll check, make sure everything is still there. Make sure that everything is still strapped down tight and if it needs any tightening just gonna tighten that up a little bit there wouldn't want anything to fall off like i've been saying have i been uh making that point clear enough yet we do not want anything to fall off the trailer it's what i'm guessing would be every flat better's worst nightmare nobody wants that Do you guys have any scary stories of when stuff has fallen off of flatbeds around you? You don't have to admit to it if it was you. But uh, what happened? How did it go down? Was anyone hurt or was anything damaged? And I just want to hear stories of something you saw firsthand. Let me know down below in the comment section. I'd be very curious to and interested to hear those stories. All right, come on with me, guys. Take a look at this. Well, they're still there. That's a good sign. Tires are still there. For me personally, I only did two tires per strap. I've seen people strap as many as eight under one strap, like four high and then beside each other. For me, it was a little bit, uh, that's a little bit much, but I'm gonna quickly do a walk around, make sure everything's good and then get back in the truck here before I freeze. I'll leave you guys in here so you don't get too cold. And everything's looking really good back there. Really good. So everything's maintaining its tightness. Is that a phrase that would describe it? You can get a little bit more comfortable now that we've made it almost three hours without the straps loosening or anything else. Take my shoes off for the next little part of the journey maybe. A little more comfortable in here. For me, it's always the, the first three hours. If everything maintains itself and nothing changes or shifts, well, nothing should shift at all in general. Let's just get that clear. But if as long as the straps are still tight after three hours, it gives me a good feeling and relieves a lot of, uh, I don't wanna call it stress, but makes me feel good about the load for the rest of the trip. I'm still gonna stop every two to three hours to check on it anyways. Uh, but at least now I know that, you know, Sometimes loads settle and then you gotta tighten the straps. That's why I usually stop about a half hour after I leave, check the straps, and then another hour after that, check them, and then about every three hours after that. Uh, what's your system? If you guys are on flatbed, how often do you stop to check your straps to make sure they're tight? Let me know also down, also let me know that down below in the comment section. Love to hear from you. So I'm thinking I'd like to make it to Balgoni tonight. Balgoni baloney. It's just on this side of Regina, Saskatchewan. All kinds of funny names out there, you know? Hey, I wasn't in charge of naming any towns. It wasn't me. Should probably turn my turn signal on so that people know what I'm trying to do here. I don't want to be one of those guys that everyone gets frustrated at. Which way are you going? Use your turn signals. Because I'm usually one of those guys saying that kind of stuff. All right, every time I get a little bit of a break, more cars show up here. So I believe Balgoni would be about another uh, three hours down the road or so. There's no real big truck stops on the west side of Regina, and that's where our delivery is. There is a couple in Moose Jaw, but there's only about 10 to 15 spots at the Flying J and at the Petro Pass. So I don't want to risk going all the way there and not getting a parking spot. I'll probably stop at the Big Flying J in Balgoni just so that I can, you know, find a good place to sleep, get a good night's rest, and then uh, carry on in the morning. Go and unload these headers. And then uh, I think I gotta head back to Weyburn for a reload. I think I'm picking up some kind of steel coils. Not too sure. We're at the rest area. Just before the Saskatchewan border. I'm still in Manitoba. Oh, I'm tired. Really tired. Bit of a long day. At least it feels that way. I'm going to call it a night here and get going early in the morning. 
it's funny I've only been on this schedule for a few weeks and I'm already pretty set into it it's about 10 o'clock I'm gonna get going at 6 6 30 in the morning I kind of like this schedule though oh boy oh I want to park on my own though where no one will be beside me so how's your day diesel how's it feel being a weasel today you're a flatbed weasel now dusty weasel country boy flatbed holler man that's Brit's nickname for him the dusty weasel country boy no he's tired look at him can we just go to bed now please well bud it is our bedtime that's for sure so I'll see you guys first thing in the morning. I make a new video every day. Uh, sometimes we're uh, home at night. Sometimes we're in the truck at night. I do a little bit of everything. A little bit of flatbed. A little bit of vans. I think I'm going to be doing a lot more flatbed than vans. But I like it, you know. New experiences. Uh, learning new equipment. Well, sort of relearning. Or sort of like riding a bike, you know. It's just been a little while since I've used these skills of mine. I've uh, really been enjoying it quite a bit. I hope you guys are enjoying the content as well. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be headed from here to Avonlea, Saskatchewan, and then back to Weyburn, and I believe back to the yard from there, but it'll be a saskatchewan -y kind of day tomorrow. hope you guys join me for it. I'd love to have you with me. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, and I'll see you tomorrow.